All right, everyone, we are here. Last game of the night. Option 12, nine lives. Let, let it not be said that these semifinals <laughs> were boring, because these, these have been tale of each game being its own little story. About that right. Say that again. Oh, lordy. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so we have had two losses here for... One for Phoenix and one for option 12 uh, across both of these games that have been questionable, to say the least. And, you know, there, there has to be a question in option 12's head, you know, if if we had had a, a true team comp, would we have won? Nine Lives, on the other hand, d do you think they're going to grab that momentum and run with it? I feel like it's going to come down to really... Nine Lives has kind of grasped on to, like, a momentum for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because Option 12 kind of tripped themselves up. Because it seemed like that last game that it was more, oh, we need to use our ults to be defensive. We need to run away rather than uh, so like, yeah. fight because they really lost control of that match. That's mm -hmm. what happened. That was kind of what I was saying is that you need to trip them up and get them in a point where they're not comfortable with the game and then they're just going to fall apart. Right, and offensive ults used defensively. Um, that that's, for example, that's how you know how you're like beating like a Nasus, is if the Nasus is always ulting defensively, then you're just you're just not getting what you need to get out of that game. Um, so we'll see. How. I, don't, I just want to say there's nothing wrong with using your ults defensively. It's just when you start to notice that you're using it a lot, you're being pushed into a corner. Right, exactly, because. You're not getting full value out of your ultimates if they're always being used defensively, especially Scion's ult. Mm. Um, Scion's ult is one that is meant to be an engagement, meant to be a CC, and when you're only getting the escapability of it, that's a problem. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens here with this set of games. They do ban out the uh, Zin, so a little bit of respect there for how well Nebulon did with that. Um, Nocturne is still available. Scion is as well. We'll see if uh, Great Beard of Odin actually grabs the Scion and holds it. Thinking about it. Using a lot of brain power. Alright. So now we'll see if they'll give Prowler the Nocturne again, or if they'll have, give Nebulon the Nocturne. Because that's that's going to be a big, big choice. That... That, this Tristana first pick is a great idea as well. Brandana is just so amazing on this Tristana. Mm -hmm. Definitely showing that Nine Lives is not playing around for this final match of the night. I am surprised that they're prioritizing banning the uh, the Vi and the Teemo over Tristana. But, I mean, obviously Teemo is annoying, and Vi can be very dangerous. Very much like Zin, actually. Ooh, Nebulon taking that cane. All right. So that gives Nocturne uh, a chance again, and may maybe this time the chat's call will be correct. We'll see what happens. Yeah. If they go with the Nocturne in this pick. Right. I mean, it is possible they go with something else. Um, I think Nocturne's been working for him, though. Um, yep. <laughs> oh, they, they left the Ivern available. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Lest we forget, we forgot. <laughs> Every, everyone forgot the Ivern. That that Vagar ban, it's too much. Uh oh, getting the victor. All right, so we're we're going comfort pick city for option twelve here. Right. <laughs> oh lordy. All right, this Ivern is going to be real interesting. I I wonder if Kane's going to hunt him. Because you got to get that Ivern in such a spot that he is not able to contribute as much as he has been. Hmm. But we'll have to see. Um, Galio picked up... Hickey did very well with that Galio, despite being bullied all the time. Not surprised to see the Sivir ban. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if... Uh, Cloud Nine's... Or not Cloud Nine. God. I, I wonder if Nine Lives is going to ban out either the Sona or the Lucian for the last ban here. Um... Option 12 did very well with those in game 1. Um, might want to try to throw Ace off, but then maybe have Ashway go a little bit deeper into her pool. We'll see. In 5 seconds. 4 seconds. Come, Come on. on, Huge. Do it. Lulu. Alright, that's that's fair too. Uh, Ashway can, can be very good with the Lulu. But that means that Ace probably will get the Lucian. 
Lucian, Sona, uh, lane. More than likely. We'll see if Brandana wants to take either of those away. Um, but it would be the Sona, because he does have Tristana already. I don't know if Gregosaurus is really a big Sona player. But, I mean, j just taking away the Sona won't really stop Ashway. No. So I, th I think they should take more of a more of a pick that actually aligns with their comp, but we'll see here. Orn, all right. Orn did all right in game one. Oh, Kogma, all right. I, I had seen that Ace was playing games as Kogma. You see what I mean, Kenos, whenever I say something? Just vastly different. <laughs> All right, so this is this is clearly a comp that Option 12 has been thinking about. I'm not sure if Victor has been part of it, but I have seen Ace playing this Kogma uh, the two times I've been on the client in the last week. So this this is this is their secret comp, I guess, and we'll see if it works out for him. Um, secret that, technique. Yes. Um, durability a bit of an issue. A lot of durability on. Nine lives. Also, a little bit more if Kane decides to go to the tanky Kane. I, I think Kane will probably go blue, but we'll see. Yeah. But yeah, this this is protect Tristana. <laughs> at, at, protect at, Brandana. Right. At all costs, which has worked for <laughs> nine lives so far. Mm -hmm. um, give give or take Nebulon carrying. Um, but I mean, this this is a team comp where you you make a you make a line, you make a wall, and Tristana shoots over it or jumps over it, depending on how the fight goes. Right. So, but we'll see. I mean, Kogma is able to disrupt that Tristana with his artillery. Um, Victor also has quite a lot of range; can make something happen there. Yeah, the key point with that though is that they're going to want to kind of group up and have a point where they have that wall for Tristana. Mm -hmm. But. I feel like option 12 has a little bit more leg room than they did the last matchup where they can have a little bit more control over the map like they're so good at doing. But I'll oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say I I agree. They what option 12 was doing last game and what I imagine they'll do this game as well is they were very good at spreading out nine lives. Making mm -hmm. sure that nine lives was all over the map, weren't able to get their combos going, weren't able to get any sort of real momentum. And Nine Lives punished them for it because once Nine Lives was able to group up, they made something happen. Yep. So exactly we'll right. right. So we'll have to see if they're able to uh, to do that again. If they want to do that again, I mean, I think that uh, option twelve, depending on how well their lanes go, I think they might be fine grouping up. Mm -hmm. They do have really good... Here, here's the other thing that's really good about their team. They have better disengage than burning all of their ultimates. They just have Janna ults, and there you go. There's your disengage. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, run away. Yeah, I mean... Because, I mean, obviously, only Scion and Janna really have alt disengages. Yep. Um, but, I mean, Nine Lives just... They seem to have a much more balanced team. I would say. I, I, I would give the edge to them just because of the tanks and everything that they have going for them. You're not going to go with the Ivern? I mean, I love I, I, I love Ivern just because of how jolly he is, and Victor and Cyan are some of my favorite champs, but, I mean, just on paper, I think that Nine Lives will probably win this. Um, yeah. But Option 12, they, they can take control of a game and make you step, miss step. I'll need to agree with you. It really is going to come down to option 12, how well they play this game, right? Mm -hmm. and, if, and I feel like Nine Lives definitely is bringing a lot to the table here where they're going to be... This is the last game of the night. They know it. Like They're bringing out champs, and they're going to play Protect the Brandana. Excuse me, Tristana. Mm -hmm. And if that works for them, option 12 is going to be in a lot of hurt and a lot of trouble. I do like uh, the Kogma pick against Tristana, though. I have to imagine this is something that Option 12 has thought of a lot. Mm -hmm. Possibly why they didn't ban out the Tristana early. Um, though, like we said, they do seem very scared of Vi and Teemo. Yep. Um, but also, Nine Lives is scared of Ivern, but let him through in this last pick. So, we'll see what happens. 
Teams are set up. We are set up going into the Nero Skin Showdown. Once the game finishes loading. Yeah, my own skins. A lot of skin possibilities, so I'm imagining we're going to have the Candy Land, yeah. Candy King Ivor. No and cane skin. No orange skin. Option 12 probably wins this by default then. Hey, look, Ace has a Cogma skin. Imagine that. <laughs> oh. All right, so option 12 wins the skins again. Ash away, you're wrong, wrong uh, holiday there. A little bit late. A little bit late. All right, here we go. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate that skin. Which one is it? Bewitching Janna. Mm. Oh. And a pause. And a pause. Wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> Who needed to go to the bathroom this time? That's interesting. Commencing that? stopwatch. I, I I hadn't actually looked at the uh, the stopwatch like summoner thing. Transform stopwatch after ten minutes. Stopwatch jumping should be six gold. That's an interesting tooltip. Oh. Yeah, wondering who disconnected. Obviously, that's a big contributor to the game here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it was pretty quick. You got to learn anything, something about the commencing stopwatch. All right, everyone with their emotes, happy fun time. Make sure we are caught up on the clock. We are. All right, so we're expecting Kane to probably go blue, but we'll see if they really want to commit to this protect the Tristana comp. We will see if there's any sort of aggression. It looks as though everyone is playing it absolutely safe. They both know what's on the line here. But we will see. Odin getting some laughs in. Jeff would be proud though. Lots of people not picking their spells. What are your what what's your opinion on Victor skins there, Nickel? Victor skins? Yeah. Like do you think this is a good Victor skin? Or would you prefer a different one? Let me take a look at this thing. Eh. I feel like there are some other ones that I would prefer. Yeah, there's there's some... This is one of the older skins, I believe. But, I mean, at the same time, I've never really been that infatuated with most of Victor's skins. I think other champions like Swain have much better options. Right. Plus, Victor's been around for a while now, so... I don't know. Dale skins, I guess you could say, a little bit. But... There's only so much you can do with a steampunk wizard. Well, you with that it. attitude, especially. <laughs> Alright, so I uh, decided to go with its Q first, going for some of that shield, expecting a little bit of aggression from Hickey. We'll see how it works out for him. we got to keep an eye on this Leona, I think. Regosaurus' ability to harass um, and scare away Ace and Ashway is going to be a big impact on this game, I think. Mm hmm. We saw it in Blitzkrieg's game as, as well. Top lane, once again, is uh, Scion versus uh, Orn. And Ivern just goes around doing candy tree things. Making friends with everybody. Hey there. Wanna be my friend? Alright, Nebulon coming down. This was spotted. Ooh, that's a fun little graphic. That twister. But everyone being relatively safe for the moment. Uh, probably wait until they get all of their abilities to play with Ace going really far forward there. That's a bit of a risk. Uh, Gregosaurus does have both of his engage abilities available. Might be waiting for that sunburst or whatever it's called. Eclipse? Ooh, misses. Misses the grab there. That's gonna hurt. Like you were saying, Ace is out for blood this game. 
Ace also missing some CS for the sake of getting a few pokes in. Here comes Ivern. See what happens. Ooh, great stun there. This should be a dead Galia, but let's see what happens. Flashes for it. Does the taunt. Flash from Shaken as well. First blood. Great job by uh, Prowler there. And good job by Shaken putting his uh, gravity field in a perfect spot. Counter gank coming here. Nebulon. Odin is going to see this. Wisely going to back off. A lot... A lot less uh, CC options um, this time for nine lives in their ganks. Mm -hmm. Makes uh, makes it a little less dangerous for Great Breed of Odin in particular, who was having to blow a lot of those flashes, both in uh, games one and two. Right. So I'm I'm sure he feels very comfortable up here in this lane, especially because he is being so aggressive. Feels comfortable and also a little bit of help from the junglers never hurts. Absolutely. Galio getting pushed back pretty far here. Shaken does have a big CS lead. And uh, almost a full level advantage. Well, 75% of a level advantage. But Prowl Prowler just kind of shows up. <laughs> Hello. Here. It should be my way. Traveling tree man. Ooh, Ace gets rooted here. This is going to be basically the start of the fight here. Um, there is the Ignite blown on him. All that damage over time. Ace is going to go down, no question here. Ashway actually just straight up abandons him. Here comes Prowler. They're going to turn on Gregosaurus. Should kill him. Good flash, though. Looks like he'll get away. Uh, close, but no cigar. Ooh, nice knock up there. And that's probably how this lane is going to play off. Ace is a very immobile ADC here. The second that Gregosaurus gets on him, it's going to be a problem. They've really got to respect that. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what happens. Victor, uh, less of a CS lead than before. He does have the first blood benefit, of course. The kill going over to Brandana is very painful. But I have to imagine that option 12 did kind of prepare for this. If you're going against 9 lives, you know what's going to happen. Brandana is going to be one of the biggest threats you're going to run into. Right. And they're playing it pretty safely right now with Protect the Brandana. Getting a kill for it for the troubles. Shaken pushing really deep. Is specking fully into that laser. We'll see how quickly... Oh, he did decide to evolve uh, right away. Does have the augment, I think. Looks like it. Yeah, that laser with that explosion. Really important. Exponentially increases Victor's damage. We'll see what happens here. Prowler just hanging out. Being good friends with everybody. <laughs> Kane, meanwhile, trying to find an opening. Looks like he's going to go back top again. Gripier Votin should be okay. There is no ultimate on huge yet, but the longer that th he stays up here, the better chance there will be. Alt that was an interesting flash there. He got Great Beard of Odin's flash as well. Yeah. But we'll see if Kane misses that later. That was nicely done by Kane for blocking that Zion ult. Once again, we're seeing the defensive Zion ults. Right. We'll see if that becomes a trend again. A trend you don't want to see, as we said earlier, but we'll see what happens. Early game, that's not too much of an issue, especially when you're having a little bit of... He's not having too much trouble in lane in CS. Looking, it's pretty good for him so far. All right, but so shared blue buffs now, as Ivern can do. So that'll really help this Victor out. Bot lane, Ace is down, 6 CS, and that kill translates into 400 gold-ish. But he's zoning pretty well. Um, we'll see. Really gotta respect Regosaurus here, though. Good chase from Shaken as well. Okay, here comes Ivern. He is not spotted. Let's see how this goes. Brydana is probably going to jump to get out. The snare misses. Here comes the roots. Alt lands on Janna, though. Uh, good interception there by Prowler. Ace gets stunned. Is going to back off and blown up a little bit. Lion's damage. Here comes Nebulon, though. Misses most of what's going on here. Good flash by Ivern to get out. Here comes Daisy. 
Daisy wants blood. Probably won't get it. Alright, so everyone's there. Stuff happened. Ivern had to use Flash. Probably happy Ace survived that, though. We'll see if he, he blows that, but yeah, it looks like they're okay. Alright. Dragon is a Cloud Drake. Um, Shaken getting some poke on that turret. Blue buff is gone. Ivern does still have his blue buff uh, for a while yet. Top lane, uh, Odin winning handily. Mid lane also. So there's a big CS advantage in every lane except in that bot lane. So option 12 must be feeling pretty good about that, and that's where most of their gold lead is coming from, I'm sure. Odin just beating on huge here. Yeah, Scion bully in full effect this game. Odin hasn't even gone back yet. <laughs> It'll only get worse, huge. It'll only get worse. Well, that's the other thing, though, is that as long as he doesn't go back, he, he's g Odin is going to have a weaker and weaker position as long the longer he isn't back. But, I mean, we'll see if that even matters. That Q took a huge chunk off Yuji's health bar. Oh, Ace Ashway. in trouble. Ashway goes down. This this uh, this bot lane is really suffering for option 12 here, which is what happens whenever anyone goes up against the bot lane of uh, Brandana and Gregosaurus. Right. Oh. Once again, that. defensive ult. Managed to get out, though. Might actually turn yeah. around and bring it back in. We'll see. Shaken really scaring this Galio off. That damage. Here comes the... Or, or not necessarily here comes the Kane. Kane is still present, let's put it that way. Oh, he's gonna go kill one of Ivern's friends. No. What a jerk. Alright, Odin, you really gotta go back, man. <laughs> <laughs> You've got... It was pretty cool before, but now, now, it's not, not a joke anymore. Here oh comes boy. Kane again. This isn't, this isn't gonna do anything. Nope. Odin's close enough to turret. He's tanky as heck, even without items, which is terrifying. But that's Scion Bye. for you. Everybody. Ooh, they actually get the flash out of Hickey. Very impressive. I don't know if this dragon's going to work out for him. Daisy playing great defense. Gets pulled back because that's what happens. Ooh, big stun there on Ashway and Ace. Or, no, not Ace, Prowler. Uh, Hickey comes in for the taunt, does get Ace, but there's a lot of damage here. Brandana goes down, teleports coming in. May not be enough. Big Galio ult just to try to get Daisy off of him. Let's see what happens. Ace is kind of all of lone. Ashway gets jumped on as well. Here comes Great Period of Odin. Gregosaurus is also going to get taken out here very easily. Ashway is in trouble, but do you really care about that with how well the rest of your team is doing? Nebulon is going to go down. They should get huge as well. Huge probably will flash, does. And the Drake goes back to sleeping. Well, that was an exciting few minutes. I'm going to nap now. <laughs> Take your breath, cows. Jeez. <laughs> Poor little dragon. He's just trying to sleep. All right, you. Awoken from my slumber. Huge, very low. Shaken now three and zero. Oh, that is a victor that you don't want to mess with right now. Mm -hmm. No mana, of course. Hey, look! Great period of Odin finally bought items. Just ten out of ten. Just straight bought righteous glory. Whatever. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So that fight obviously did go very well for uh, option 12. Didn't really get any objectives out of it, though, which I'm sure they would have liked to do. Uh, Gregosaur is coming in to help clean up the uh, wards on here. Keep an eye out. Uh, gold, thanks to that, uh, Ace is now equal in gold. Going to go back and spend 2,800. That's going to be a big tempo swing for them. Should, should get his first item. Does. Grabs the Rage Blade. Nebulon is uh, is coming forward here. Is going to jump on Prowler. Prowler might be in a little bit of trouble. Does shield himself. Also roots himself. Throws up some some grass. It looks as though uh, Nine Lives might be considering going for this dragon. 
It's okay. Ivern's got its back. Putting yeah. some bushes just, so that just, it can hide. Yeah, just don't face check that, Prowler. Whatever you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah Alright. Top lane, uh, you just still down CS. Um, of course, Odin's even bigger bully now, but Yuja's AoE damage does manage to keep him off the turret for the most part. Right, Danny gets a little bit of chip damage there. Ashaway really uh, taking a lot of hits for the team. Showing the support of Spear right there. Right, for sure. They probably don't feel as intimidated by an Ashaway Janna as opposed to some of the other. Once again, defensive ult. Throws up a little laugh, though. It is nice that that is unstoppable, though. Right. And option 12 once again tries to go for this dragon. Daisy playing defense. Shaken Not Stirred is here as well. The Galio ult is not available, so they should get this dragon with little trouble. Thanks, Daisy. Daisy, the real MVP, confirmed. I am really liking the presence that Shaken Not Stirred is bringing to this mid lane. Mm -hmm. um, he is able to rotate whenever his team needs him because he is bullying Hickey so much. Right. Like, you know, I, I was I was looking there as Shaken was coming down. I was expecting it to be nine lives as mid lane. Oh, nope, that is not the case. Oh, yep. boy. A Ace just leaves. <laughs> Thanks, Ashway. Ashway. <laughs> See you later. Yeah, in 20 seconds. Did your job. All right. Daisy sacrificed. And they hook up once again. Victor just owns mid lane. Hey, guys, come to my house. It's safe. What's going on here? Well, Galio's not here, I can tell you that. Ace might be a little too far forward here. Oh, nice! Nice. There's that artillery. Too far forward, show too far forward. He gets that. That being said, Brandana might be able to get this turret. He's completely alone here. Well, option 12 could get it first. Let's see what happens. Gonna be close. I think option 12 can get it. Okay. Yep. Might get a Nebulon for the troubles too. Oh, that. Oh. There's that Ignite again. Yeah. Four kills and a level two uh, victor here. Went with his Q as his next. <laughs> and poor, poor Ashaway yeah. trying her best. I mean, a Ashaway, <laughs> I don't really agree with that decision, but flashes and survives. I mean, I, I realize you're 0 and 3, but you still don't want to give Brandana any gold. And is not really going to care about a Janna at this point. Prowler makes best friends with uh, the red buff here and gets it to Shaken as well. They try to collapse on Huge. Could actually get him here! Ooh, very close. Good shield. Should get this turret. Alright, so option 12 is very, uh, very much online right now. Yep. They are about 3k gold up. Uh, they could go for Rift Herald next and probably get away with it. Nebulon did go red. Interesting. So definitely committing to that uh, Brandana protection as well as an extra uh, survivability. Alright, let's see what happens here. Lots of people come into the party. Oh, Nebulon going in. That's a very risky call there. Not sure it's going to work out for him. Does hide inside of Prowler. Will be healed a little bit. Going in very aggressively. Will probably get taken down here in a second. Meanwhile, Shaken is actually caught out. Will end up going down. Shut down there. The Scion ult was used. I'm not going to use the term wasted, but was definitely used. Gregosaurus is very low. With Brandana down as well, I don't know how else they can contest this. They certainly think like they're going to try, though. But with Ace and Great Beard of Odin there, I don't think they have a chance. Just doing that damage. Oh, oh, oh! Nice flash from Pig. Alright, Prowler gets it. 3k gold lead now. Definitely taking control over the map now. This Ivern okay. is certainly helping. Um, right. Oh, one and eight. Being it's everybody's friends, not doing any kills. Right, exactly. You know, he's just helping out. He's a big helper. 
And Odin BMing in the mid lane, that's great. Alright, next dragon, another Cloud Drake, so very similar to last game. Odin's got to get out of there. Because you may be really strong, Odin, but you're not three members of nine lives strong. Shaken as well, oh, gotta look out here. Yeah, Alright. So, that is a collapse if I've ever seen one, folks. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. <laughs> All right, they're so going to get a pretty mid easy mid lane for their troubles. They are. Meanwhile, Ace is trying to split push here. There is a call to hold, but it looks as though uh, Ace and Ashway don't care. However, there is an obvious rotation coming to try to cut them off. This is spotted, so they should get out in plenty of time. Yep. Yep. Alright, so they're good. Um, turrets are 2-3. to three. Oh, a little bit of a fight here. Prowler versus Nebulon. Who wins? Angry size or friendship? Looks like... The final next time. Yeah, looks like it's a, it's a tie. Friendship was thinking about it, though. I was thinking about brutally murder, murdering. Oh, well, that, that's what friendship is all about, right? Brutally murdering people? Well, you know, people who are a threat to your friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what else is Daisy doing with, with, with its life, if not brutally murdering people for Ivern, really? Very true, very true, actually. A lot of slows here is on Hickey. May end up going down. Ace's damage is absolutely insane. 4, 1, and 3. Still equivalent in gold to Brandana, though, so both are in equal time. Brandana is waiting. Brandana wants it. But all alone, let's see what'll happen here. Does the knockback there. Here comes the Orn. This could be huge. Does knock up two members of the team. Not really the ones they want, though. Ace does a wise flash to get out of there. And now they're going to do, uh, I think, some sort of uh, sieging retreat. Good twister there. Here comes Daisy again. Huge has to flash. Daisy doesn't give a damn what's going on here. Alright. Minion Wave is here. They still have the, uh, the the Garden. I don't know why they aren't using it. Maybe they're just too worried about being interrupted. Yeah. This, this feels like it's going to be one of those that's going to spawn, like, in the red side jungle. Just because they aren't using it. Yep. Well, it's going to turn into, almost. Going for the next Cloud Drake. Are Nine Lives going to try Baron here? No. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. They're checking, though. They're, che they're checking to see what kind of coverage is over there. They do grab the dragon. Crowler makes friends with the crab. But I think he... Yeah, th this, uh... The eye is going to be used in a second here. He's just using it straight up. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think that was intentional. Yeah, they should they should have used that about two minutes ago. That that's the freest herald you're ever gonna see. Mm -hmm. Especially after that champion one we saw earlier today. You hate to see it. Maybe maybe next time. All right, so they both go back. Option twelve playing this very safe. Part of the reason why the herald was used like that is because of how safe they've been playing it. All right. Victor still is at Mark II. Um, gold. Doesn't look like he's quite at the point of saving up for it. Might be going for a, a Lich Bane, but we'll see. Oh, big rotation coming to him. Ward should have spotted this. Quickly runs to turret. Ooh, a cheeky little laser there. I like it. Prowler yeah. and uh, Ashray might get caught. Probably should get out of there. That's an interesting direction for the Twister to go, but whatever. Oh, Prowler, what are you doing? Gregosaurus just kind of walks past the whole engagement here. Huge taking a lot of damage. Gregosaurus has to flash to get away. And now there's a retreat coming from Nine Lives here. I don't think the Ornn is going to be able to... Oh, but Ace is actually kind of abandoned there. Big play here. This could be the turning point that Nine Lives really needed here. Let's see what happens. Great Period of Odin is kind of all alone. 
Could help save Prowler here, could help do pretty much anything. Lot of damage, Hickey is going to get away as well. Who is left? We've got... Yeah, so that's going to be a four for one? Yeah. Yeah. Not the fight option 12 wanted by any stretch of the imagination. Very, very messy, and unfortunately their back line was really exposed there. So that, that gives nine lives life. That That is something that they really needed. Ocean Drake will be the next dragon. Uh, not really able to get Baron at this point, though. No, everybody coming back too quick. Definitely not a position to do that. Safely, anyways. Alright, so now uh, option 12 definitely has to uh, both take a breath, make sure that they don't do anything too stupid, but also find a way to make sure this doesn't start spiraling. Right. They are 2k gold up, but that's just in towers. Also two drakes, which is very significant. We'll let them get those rotations. Yeah, they, they, a lot of pings to retreat. That's not a bad idea. Do clear out the red ward, though, which is kind of what they were trying to do when the disaster happened last time. Yeah. Still a thousand gold lead for the top lane. Bot lanes are still somewhat even. Mid lane, though, is still the big story. Shaken's Victor doing very well compared to the Gallio. But the Gallio has definitely made his presence known. I mean, Gallio was the reason they were able to secure those kills on uh, Ace. Right, that ult was a pretty big game changer in that fight there. And that's what they gotta look out for. They gotta keep people away. Oh, good root there. Not very durable, uh, this Leona quite yet. Ooh, big aggression here. F split push. Uh, we'll see if Great Period of Odin gets very involved in it. Minion wave, they, got, they really got away from the minion wave, and that's why there's a retreat ping. Because those minion waves will get you. Odin here getting chased off by Huge, mostly just because of potential enemy presence, but no one's really coming that way just yet, and I think he knows it. Gets some cheeky hits in on the turret. The shield is working pretty well, and they're doing a Baron in response to this. I don't really know if this is the time or the place for it, but we'll see what happens here. And they're letting Daisy continue the pressure. But Daisy backs off as well, and I think they're going to have to let this go. I mean, as powerful as option 12 are, I don't think, especially without Scion there, I don't think they have the ability to, to win a Baron fight. Right. Maybe if, the, if they picked off somebody else, perhaps. But now here comes all the help for, uh, for Yuge here. Odin should get out of there. I think he knows he has to get out of there. He does have ult available. But I don't think he'll waste it. Ward does spot it, and he backs off. Cloud Drake helping. Once again, Baron. I... I mean, now it's a 3v4 at least. They'll have to wait for Kane to get back here. Train could come, actually. This would be a huge Scion train. Like, you gotta do this right now. Here it comes. It's gonna land on Brandana. That is huge! Sniped from Ace. This is going to get worse before it gets better. That's two snipes now. Prowler flashes, misses the bindings. They could turn on Baron right now, and I honestly think they should, but it looks as though they're going to go for the inhibitor instead. Yeah, it looks more of that was Baron was just a feint just to get people in there so that Odin could ult them. That was a really good ult by Odin. Right? Amazing job there. All right, let's see how this goes. Uh, Hickey is trying to hold the line. Does have the AoE damage. Here comes the Forge Spirit as well. Hickey goes in on a really good time. Lands a great taunt. Plenty of damage coming off on Odin, who has to back off. The AoE as well from Orin. They're going to hold this. Baron definitely would have been a better play, I think. Dragon is up, though, so they're going to head for that. Going to drop a ward or two. There is a call to check red buff. Yeah, they know there isn't a Baron. They're checking to see if the uh, the other side is going to try to reverse Baron, but they are not. At least not at this point. They are kind of moving in that direction, though. Odin returns to uh, his farming bot lane. Ace, wants Ace has really been sitting on a lot of gold at a time here. 
I, I would like to see him go back at some point instead of wandering about. He wants this red buff, though. He's just gonna up and kill it. Fuck friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You know, dude's best friend right in front of him? <laughs> That's cold, man. Cold. But, or, uh, Ivern gets the red buff too, so everyone's still friends. And Scion gets away. Yep. Alright. So there's a lot of pings on Baron here. Uh, there is no vision on Baron for option 12. I'm sure that concerns them a little bit. They have a tiny bit, I can actually ping, so I will, here. Um, but that, you wouldn't be able to see any of this area here, which would definitely be where they're concerned. Ashway's sneaking in here. Ivern coming with. Throws up some grass. Okay. So once again, gathering around Baron. Once again, Great Beard of Odin is split pushing. Great Beard of Odin at 4,000 health. Practically. Nothing to sneeze at at all. Ash, they're actually in a pretty vulnerable position here. I, uh, I, I am worried about them here. Orin coming in the other side. Ace getting a little aggressive. They gotta be, they gotta be careful here. Kane getting really, going in on, uh, Ivern here right away. Big stun as well. Daisy is there, but Daisy can't really do anything. And now here comes all the pressure. Shaken dies to the red buff. Forge God does hit Ace. Ace does have flash available. Dealing a lot of damage to Nebulon, though. Ground pelt Dealing to too. everybody, actually. Ace is eating, folks. But, I mean, that's all that's all smoke and mirrors at this point. If they actually turn on him, and they actually may right here. Congratulations, Ace. You can do a lot of damage, but if you're knocked up, you can't do anything. Does get Brandana, though. Gets Brandana. Nebulon might take... Nope. That explosion doesn't deal that much damage. I'm sure Ace is fine getting Brandana there, but I'd, I think it would have been better if he hadn't died at all. Which, which you know, is the, the, the most obvious thing to ever say in the world, but you know what I mean. Yep. Alright, so this bot lane is still trying to be pushed. Odin is not really threatened by anybody at this moment, though we do have Kane coming to try to contest this. He does have ult, so Odin should once again be fine. Alright, so the next dragon coming up will be Cloud again. Alright, so very, very macro uh, <laughs> drags this game. Very positionally based, but all of them going over to option 12 here, but the game is still incredibly close. Um, no question at all there, both ADCs equivalent in gold, good as. Uh, top laners... Does still have the top and mid still very much in uh, option 12's pocket though. But here comes the cane. Oh, why is he backs off? And once again, you just stuck fighting Great Beard of Odin. Not, not a fun assignment. It's really funny to see all of these fights going on with both tanks just kind of off doing their own thing. Right. I want to split push. No, you can't split push. This is my lane. Still just hanging around that Baron. I think this is part of the reason why... Oh! Very aggressive try to play there. Flash blown as well. Might be a little too aggressive. Odin actually taking a lot of damage there. Ace in trouble. Ace in a lot of trouble. Ace so out of position here. This may be what nine lives needs. Okay. If you're, if you're nine lives here, I think you go Baron. Or at the very least, really try to... Well, actually, maybe not. Shaken is out of position. As is Great Beard of Odin. There is a ping on that Baron. Odin can't really get involved. It's a 3v4. And they're killing this Baron pretty quick here. Here comes Daisy. I don't know if they have the damage here. Turret is destroyed, so Orn now has to engage on Shaken here. They have. They appear to have chased off, though the Baron is still going. Brandana dealing a lot of damage to it. We'll see what happens here. Prowler is really trying to get involved. The stun does land. It's going to be really close. Ashaway is here. Uh, damage coming in. Inhibitor has been taken out. Gregosaurus may get killed. They are going to get Baron, though. Well, Prowler comes in. 
Nice! Gets the steal. <laughs> Brandana now wants revenge. Alright, so Brandana gets two of the kills. Odin does have the Baron buff as well. And Ace managed to spawn as, to get it as well. So we have three members of option 12 with Baron, and the big split pusher is the most important one. This cannon minion is going to town. And they have the mid open, so things definitely looking good for option 12. 5k gold lead. Great steal there by Prowler. And nicely done. Showing he's not out. Odin, you're in trouble, my guy. Flashes, gets out. <laughs> There's that those defensive alts again, taking that hard corner. Yep. I would say that in this situation, the defensive alt is warranted um, because he's getting so much done while using it. Yep. it. It's not being at the start of a losing team fight and running away. It's right. causing tons of aggression in the bot lane and then getting away. So that's fine. We'll see how much more he can get away with it, though. I'm. This this is something that a lot of top laners like like Shake and Nutster when he's been playing top lane, like Great Beard of Odin. Um, they do very well, which is this split pushing. But now he may have overstepped. Brandana is here. He doesn't have his ult to get away, though he will be getting it in seven seconds. Gregosaurus puts down the stun. Four seconds on the ult. I love this body blocking. This is great awareness by the support. He actually runs the wrong way. Odin may finally get taken down here. Does he put his shield up? Was he possibly trying to flash? Okay. So yeah, Odin overstays, loses Baron. Meanwhile though, that distraction was enough for option 12 to get top lane. Alright. Big plays coming up here. Lots of alts used. Red turret is taken out. Will option 12 overstay though? They do not have their tank. They do take out Galio. They're gonna get this inhibitor as well. Here comes Kane though. Kane knocks up the entire team. Ace wisely flashes out of there, wants no part of it. Ashway dies as well. Prowler may go down. Uh, Shaken and Ace, you don't want to stick around that much. They do get the uh, Guardian Angel. Yeah, you're sticking around way too much here, guys. You gotta get out. Ace getting that damage out though. Can he clear out the whole team? I think the answer is no. Nope. Overstaying. Just, you hate to see it. Almost an ace. Still a 5k gold lead for option 12. Almost all of it in towers. They really didn't need to die there, though. And, I mean, Winions may help out here. I don't think it's been noticed quite yet, but there's... Yeah, there we go. A lot of damage on those turrets, so that that's good. Almost got down this one. Inhibitor turret. But, yeah, that sacrifice was not necessary. Alright. Brandana's getting bigger by the second, 12 and 4. It's interesting that we were kind of praising option 12 for playing very defensively, and now it seems like that they kind of switched gears into a more aggressive, borderline, needlessly aggressive team right now. They are definitely trying to play the split push hand they've been dealt. Um, before that last fight, they were using the split push mainly as a distraction not as an aggressive distraction as a defensive distraction like hey you know we could be over here by an objective but we have a split pusher but now they were trying to use it in the more traditional sense of two side split pushing and it would have worked for them if they hadn't overcommitted and stayed longer than they needed to and we will see if it uh, if it comes back to bite them gold lead has dropped from 5k to 3k well, almost almost uh, yeah 3k and now they're aggressively pushing again as 5 this time, though. Scion is close to 5,000 health, so definitely far tankier than anything on 9 lives. So they do have 2 characters with 3,000 apiece. Almost almost 3 characters with 3,000 apiece. Little bump there. Um, Victor is... Uh, oh, okay, here comes the Forge. Does land on quite a few very powerful characters here. Ashway goes down, as does Ivern, and suddenly it's a 3v5. However, Ace is still alive. So let's see what happens here. Uh, Great Brave Odin is doing very well to try to get the escape here, but they're just running with their tails between their legs. Uh, yeah, Ace just abandons them to die. Red Inhibitor has respawned. 
This, this is not going well for them, though they do have three super minions at base. However, the, they have been distracted by other minions. Ace might get picked off here as well. Clearly too far forward here. Yep, they're, they're overstepping and it's going to cost them. Option 12, what are you doing guys? Come on. They are letting this get to them. Their, their 5,000 gold lead has, uh, has gone away. Shaken is going to get this inhibitor really easily. As long as he, yeah, as long as he retreats that direction, they're fine. Yes. You don't have your team. Leave. <laughs> Please. All right. Thanks. So they have, they have the base relatively gutted, but I don't think that's actually really helping them at this point. If anything, they are feeding gold to uh, nine lives. I can appreciate their desire to push um, down the bot lane, get that last inhibitor, all that good stuff, but there is a lot of lane control on Nine Lives' part. Um, they have the Forge God, which has been so effective. They have um, Hickey's ultimate. They've got to be careful. That's basically what, what I'm coming down to here. We may also have an Elder Drake versus Baron race coming up here, as they're both going to pop around the same time. And this is what's kind of hurting option 12 is that now they can't really have a way to force nine lives to separate because nine lives has a pretty good idea of what option 12 is going to want to do now randana and nebulon easily chunking this turret this could actually be what option 12 needs here they have their two carries very alone However, Brandan and Nebulon are both playing champions who can escape very easily. And th th this comes part of the question about split pushing, though, right? What, when is it too much? Right. Wh when are the 4v5s hurting you? Or, you know, 4v4 is hurting you. Uh, they're going for this Elder Drake. Red inhibitor spawning. Brandana's going to be coming in here uh, looking for help. They are going to try to engage on this. Let's see what happens. Forge God comes in, they do get the Elder Drake, let's see what happens, they did stop you from using that ultimate, that could be huge for them here. Uh, Ace is taunted, but it doesn't seem to matter, he is shredding, Prowler takes a lot of damage, they actually ignore CB Hickey. Going for Nebulon here, Nebulon gets the resurrection, they're going to try to trap him, Wall Run will come out, big knock up though, and that's the end of that. So that is a 4 for nothing and huge death timers here, with the Elder Drake and all of their big damage dealers left. Only Brandana can hold the line. That is a very dangerous spot for Tristana to be in. Let's see what happens here. They have 20 seconds until Gregosaurus is in. I don't know if they can win the game in 20 seconds, but they may be able to deal enough damage. Inhibitor is down. Are they going to go try to end the game? Ace is a tower-eating machine. Brandana gets caught up in the minions, does get taken out. This should be game. Option 12, after getting so aggressively far behind, unfortunately, despite that, hangs in there. And Gregosaurus trying to go in here. Oh, oh. Does not quite land it. Might kill Shaken now, Sturdy, but it doesn't matter. You got an angry Kogma there, and nine lives taken down. Phew. Option twelve making me sweat. Oh boy. I like I like to think they were sweating themselves there for a little bit. They probably were. Probably got little puddles at their desk. Yeah, right, checking out some graphs. There's that Kogma damage. As one would expect. Uh -huh. Jeez Louise. Nicely done to option 12. Able to keep their heads in the game after that second matchup. And now, wow, going into the playoffs. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. We're going we're gonna to get a potential repeat, uh, or not even potential. There will be a, a repeat champion now. <laughs> so we will, we'll have to see what that, you know, what that looks like. Both teams, um, Option 12 and uh, Phoenix. I don't want to say they were, you know, locks for winning, but both games they lost were kind of weird, right? Right. We do have Great Beard of Odin here, so we can interrogate him on that game, too. Let's hop over there. Hey, Odin, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Now, guess what my first question is going to be? Well, what's that? What the hell was game two? So, 
we ran out of time at champ select, and we kind of got auto selected the Irelia. It was a mistake. We knew it. So it came down to uh, Shaken doesn't really play it, and I played a little bit. So it's just how can we try to best play around this? Um, and then it just came down to just not being able to get into good engages with the Irelia. They just had a lot of CC to stop it from being really effective. So okay, okay. So it kind of so it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B. I gave you the benefit of the doubt, Odin. I'm like, uh, uh, maybe he was playing into the top oh. lane? I don't know. Oh, don't worry. That was our plan if it went well. It was just to say, oh, yeah, that was totally intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it went horribly wrong. So <laughs> yeah. not horribly wrong. You did pretty well for it. It went horribly wrong. Let's, let's not mince words. Hey, 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 hey. All right. So um, going into that, that last game, you guys did see me playing very defensively. I, I like the uh, kind of back and forth dance there. You do split push quite a lot. Um, was there a concern that you were making your team too squishy by not being involved in any of those sort of barren dances? So the whole reason is that it's I'm just basically split push for free with the war mogs and then my ults on about a 40 second cooldown. So mm -hmm. I can just keep pushing and getting out and it's forcing, they eventually have to force uh, someone to come back to me to do the 2v1, to, which gives us the better trades overall. So it's just trying to draw more attention towards me versus the barons. And then it's just me just trying to whittle down towers since they can't overall stop the split. It's just take just takes a little bit of time with uh, the tank fight because the Orin was able to clear a little bit faster than I would have liked. Mm. And tell me about this Ivern. How, how do you think Ivern is really helping your team succeed? Because clearly uh, it has, brings something special to your team comp. Yeah, so Ivern I think is just kind of one of those unique champions that people aren't used to seeing. So it's giving people troubles because... Everyone's used to certain certain jungles in the metal right now, and then also you throw in an Ivern, and everyone's like, "Oh God, I don't know what to do." And Ivern just has an insane amount of shields and heals, and then it's a surprising amount of damage that comes out of nowhere. And able to split the auras as well seemed to be very yeah. helpful to you guys. Yeah, it's really nice when you can get like a red buff to your ADC or a free blue buff to your mid laner like that. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Nickel, I can close it out. Do you got any further questions? Well, the only thing I kind of want to ask you, Odin, is how do you feel about going up against Phoenix in the finals? Ooh, it should be interesting. You know, we smashed them pretty hard week one, but now the their team has changed a lot here with Fat Leak taking over at jungle, so it should be an interesting game. It's like going up against a new Phoenix, so it should be a fun game to go into for the championship. You heard it here first, folks. The gauntlet is thrown. Odin said they smashed him the first time. They're going to smash him again. Watch out, <laughs> Phoenix. All right. Well, congratulations, uh, and, uh, you know, good luck. <laughs> Sounds good, thank you. All right. All right, you have a good night. Luck out. Yep, you too. All right, and with that, we have our finalists, Option 12 versus Phoenix. As uh, Odin said, Phoenix uh, com looking like a completely different team than what you saw earlier in the split. Uh, option 12 got, got some, uh, seems to get a little arrogant when they're in the lead. So we'll see if that, that that bites them a little bit. And of course, going up against Phoenix, so many possible banned targets. Uh, it's it's actually kind of, kind of scary. So we will have previews of this matchup throughout the week. Um, check out the Let's Talk About League podcast, Top vs. Bot, um, all that good stuff. Maybe another highlight video. Not sure if that's going to get thrown together. And um, we will see you here next week uh, for the finals. Hope to see you there, and everyone have a good night.